had this government teacher in high school, amazing teacher, and I loved the class, and I always remember he was teaching us about politics, and we were debating about politics, and he would have us argue, like if our political affiliation was democratic, say, we would always be forced to argue the Republican views. The point of that is, where this ties into dressage, I'm not about to start talking about politics, but the, the point of that is, is that our biases are formed by what we're familiar with. Um, and we have to push ourselves to think outside the box and kind of go into that next level of thinking about things from an open mind and a different perspective. And I think one thing that's really awesome with the horsemanship is like, these guys are kind of free from that. They are not constricted by uh, biases the way that we are. It's just raw. It's just like the horsemanship that works for them works for them. And so whether we're a dressage rider or a natural horsemanship person or whatever it is, we have to push ourselves to find what works for, for the horse. All right, I'm gonna ride her. She's just a three-year-old. She's like the most beautiful horse ever. Right, Farah? Right? Her mom will be excited to see her on the vlog. And we're off to a good start. There was actually somebody taking a lesson in there in the arena at the same time I was riding. That's why I kind of put my camera on the end because I didn't want I didn't want to have to put them in the video just out of respect to them. But she was good. She was really good. She's always good. She's really um, an easy temperament. Like really works for you. Not always always makes it fun. I wanted to talk today about King Toto, which I don't think I've actually introduced you guys to him, but he has, he's also a three-year-old like Farah, but he has a little bit of a tricky spot in there where he gets a little bit tight and he's really, really quite green. So I've been doing a lot of groundwork things, um, some of which I've learned from the natural horsemanship community and are definitely not dressage things, not things you'd typically learn in dressage. And I feel like it's helped him so much that even for me, I think we, we have our tools that we learn from watching videos or stuff like that, but maybe there's things even broader than that. We have to open our mind up and figure out what tools we can use to actually help our horses. A good horseman is really just problem solving, figuring out the best way to teach their horse to understand what we want. All right, King Toto's next. I don't think he's been on the YouTube channel that much, so we'll have to do like a proper introduction. Ready for it?
and we're rolling. So this is totally like classic King Toto. He's, he's interesting because he's super chill, super laid back, but there's like a spot in there under saddle and on the lunge line where he gets a little bit scared and then it's almost explosive. So most horses that are explosive, the feet are a little bit stuck and then they don't really know how to resolve it. But to get through that kind of explosive spot, for me personally, like I have this background in natural horsemanship, I, I start using a lot of those tools, the things that I've learned there, to help the horses through those tricky spots. And that's kind of like what I'm talking about today is we, we can get narrow if we just have one. Come on, buddy. There, he's a little stuck. He gets a little bit sticky, even leading him. Come on. There, want this to be freer. There, he's sticky again. Come. I might go trotting here. Come. Go ahead. He gets, he gets stuck there on the ground. So instead of just trying to go over there, I have to trot him a little bit like this. That's better. Always want that free that if I lead him forward, he can come with me. I had to set the camera down because I wanted to work on that with him, but that's exactly what I'm talking about. That spot where he gets stuck leading, all of a sudden his feet are stuck. What, where that manifests later on is like the trot canter transition then being explosive. So I'll work on that a little bit here and let me see if you can see it. Just if I lead him forward, I want him really free to go into the trot and really honest reacting to that forward aid on the ground. The other thing is this duck spot is often met with a brace with the base of the neck coming up and so if I can get him like giving the head down and then coming forward, similar to I would under saddle, that gets through that stuck spot. Rocks in the round pen. <laughs> Okay, so here's my little tip for the day. I lunged him a little bit in here already, just around. He actually has more energy than he looks like. So cute. But this is called switching eyes. It's a tip from the natural horsemanship world. And you just take the lead line on the direct rein and you go over on the off side. Okay, so you put it over on the other side of them like this. Down, all the way around. Okay, if he turns. You're just teaching him to turn and yield. All the way on the other side of him like this. That's pretty much it. You just want him to bend and yield and put the hind leg away and turn around. Now, I've already done this with him and some horses are gonna get scared in that moment. And you just have to teach them slowly to bend and yield and turn around and then everything's okay. When horses get scared, they wanna run. So you're trying to train them that when they get scared, they don't have to run. <laughs> Time to ride him. <laughs> I 
Okay, I'm now like at the end of my ride. Just got off to move my camera, but I wanted to show you guys a little trick that I got on to to teach the horse to move sideways to the leg. So he's just a three-year-old, he doesn't really understand leg means go sideways. If I do it like straight away, what happens is I'll come with a leg and I'll run through the contact. So if I point him at the rail, that helps me because then that's a boundary he understands and I can kind of point him, point him, till he goes sideways and then reward him. Let me see if I can show you. Then he can be done. He's worked hard today. That's it for King Toto. He's like such a cool horse. That compact power ball. I wish he was a hand taller or two hands taller. Or if I was like five foot two. <laughs> I guess like the broad point I'm trying to make today is that horsemanship is super vast and you're gonna have like different worlds, the Western world, the dressage world, even different systems within dressage. And I think if we get too narrow, what we miss is the ability to adjust to each individual horse. And so for me, like I think it's really important to stay open and try to allow ourselves to stay open and view things objectively. And if there's a system or a way of doing things that can help a horse, even if it's just one horse one time or one day or one exercise that we use, that it's limiting if we, if we stop doing that. So stay open, stay open and do what's best for each individual horse. Fly my drone, end of the day into the day drone fight. It's only water, it's either sick or swim. Can't hold back your light and expect to win. Gotta go harder, oh you've gotta learn. Don't suppress your fire, baby.